Timely. Insightful. Discussion and analysis of economic trends and markets. From Southern California to Sacramento. Featuring business and political leaders. Unique field reports. From Orange County and the campus of Chapman University, this is the Chapman Business Report. And welcome back to the Chapman Business Reports, our weekly look at business, financial markets, and a special focus on the regional economies of Southern California. And something a little different on this show, we're going to focus on entrepreneurship. I'm Pete Weitzner. I head up the television and broadcast journalism program here on the campus of Chapman University, actually a couple of blocks west of the Dodge College of Film and Media Arts. And joining me to my left is Richard Sudek. He's the new head of the Leatherby Center for Entrepreneurship and Business Ethics over at Beckman Hall, just behind us. And to his left, a couple of his disciples, recent winners of the Forbes Most Likely to Succeed contest and co-owners of the company Pet Solutions, Tilden Smith and Dylan Bolts, childhood friends, right? Yep. Right. Now in yeah. business together. We'll talk about their business and what gave them that fire in the belly at a very young age to be entrepreneurs, which Richard Sudek had as well. And Richard, why don't we start with that? Now, you head up this Center for Entrepreneurship, but as the saying goes, you don't just teach it, you were it. And it is a, for most entrepreneurs, right? It is a, it's a fire in the belly. It's something you have to have when you're young? I don't think you have to have it when you're young, but you certainly have to have it if you're going to execute. You have to have a passion for what you're doing. You have to have a fire in the belly to be competitive to persevere and be persistent on on uh, uh, seeing it out because there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road if you're going to try to start a company. Well, in your case, it was parties down the street and you said all these nice cars, they need car washes. Sorry, when I was a very young age, I started lemonade stands and car washes and a number of things and I, I sort of had the entrepreneur bug when I was very young. Told you you're how old? I am currently 20. Okay, and Pet Solutions, I mentioned winner with Dylan of the national contest, Forbes most likely to succeed. But that's not even your first business. Um, no, before that I started a business selling medical equipment. So defibrillators and mostly defibrillators and other types of things like pulse oximeters and stuff. That was in high school. Most high schoolers don't do that. Uh, is it from the family, is it from a family of entrepreneurs? Or did you see Bill Gates on TV? I mean, how did it come about? Um, I initially, was, I took an EMT course and bought some stuff for my own like really intense first aid kit. <laughs> And I got a really good price on it and realized I could sell the stuff for more than I was buying it for. So then I looked into getting distributor accounts with different companies and importing stuff from China. Um, and it just kind of grew from there. Dylan, same for you because this is in Pet Solutions, which we'll talk about. It's a successful business, um, the pet lawn, um, but it's not the first for you either. No, in uh, high school, I actually worked with a friend of mine that I went to junior high with. And we started like a graphic design kind of marketing company where we did a lot of websites for restaurants and uh, actually some like nurseries and uh, also designed flyers and home like selling brochures for realtors. So that was kind of like my first dabble in with dealing, dealing with customers or not having a car at first and trying to meet them on a bike was a challenge. But uh, yeah, kind of like Sudek was, I guess both of, like Sudek said, both of us got started kind of young so my first business was a lemonade stand in front of a construction site <laughs> in fifth grade the, the so, traditional yeah. first business let's back <laughs> up a little I hear there's a lot of discussions these days on what is it going to take to get the American economy going again many of the world economies and a lot of talk that we need we're going to need some reluctant entrepreneurs that people need to think more creatively these days and, and to, if they don't have that fire in the belly to develop it would you agree well, I think there's a lot of opportunity for people at all stages of their life. In fact, demographics are showing that people are getting entrepreneurship at much later ages. We, we sort of think of the entrepreneur as 20-something, but there's people in their 30s, 40s, 50s starting businesses who worked at you know, corporations and other businesses. So uh, I, I teach my students that typically you're going to be touched by entrepreneurship either later in life in your career by your spouse or by a customer or a vendor. And so I think there's a lot of shift to people who realize that that, that corporate job is not going to work long term anymore, and they're going to they're going to find some opportunity and try to maybe build a small business, but a business out of consulting or something related to to the business they were in. Three kinds of people, you said. Yes. One, hardcore entrepreneurs. They're right. I think there's there's some that are just born that way. I think these are the Tilden and Dylan are examples. They knew they were going to be entrepreneurs from a young age. And uh, they're typically starting businesses by the time they're in college, maybe before or, or shortly after. 
Uh, I think there's another group of people who probably are most comfortable staying in the corporate environment, that they're not interested in starting something and they, they're happy and content with that. But I think there's a big group of people in the middle that um, if you give them the right tools and you encourage them that they be, can become entrepreneurs. They might not become the, the big high tech entrepreneurs, but there's, you know, most of our businesses are lifestyle businesses. They're not big fast growth businesses. And there's a lot of people that uh, open up a franchise or open up a lifestyle business and uh, they just need some, some tools to do that. And your company and your main product, the Pet Lawn, a place for, for, for dogs, for pets, uh, to relieve themselves and not not soil one's, uh, <laughs> one's living room. Um, you built a better mousetrap, basically. It's a lifestyle product, right? Yeah, basically. Um, there were existing products in the market when we came out with ours, but we noticed, I, I think Dylan, this, this is his idea to create the product, and well, do you want to explain yeah. why? Yeah, um, I guess, like, we moved from a house to an apartment, and we had a dog with us, so it kind of, like, the need arose, like, where I could see where something like this should exist, and then, looked into it and saw that there was stuff on the market but none of them really worked out um, and then really we went to college and first year we didn't do anything with the idea then sophomore year is when we kind of picked it up but um, yeah I guess from that the, the pet lawn kind of came out of the idea and then we saw that there was a need and that we could build a better mouse trap like you said so it's yep. kind of like this sec was it the second mouse piece <laughs> of cheese or and that's, hopefully you know that's pretty it's typical that a lot of comp lot, lot of people they, they find an opportunity based on the personal experience like that, right? Where they, and he, you know, he decided to do the lemonade stand in front of the construction zone, right? That, yeah. that, that something uh, appears to them, they figure, out, they figure it's an opportunity that they can somehow turn it into a business and they do. It's not necessarily a revolutionary innovation, right? I mean, their product is innovative maybe, but, but it, they had a problem, they got around it, and they realized that other people have this problem. Let's talk about your individual successes. And in Richard, your case, you had a, a big success, a computer company that you later sold and kind of enabled you now to, to give back as you come over here to direct the Leatherby Center. But this computer company, what was the what was the hardest part? Coming up with the business plan, the financing, marketing, all of it, being a leader because you had employees, 40 employees at, at peak. What's the hardest part? Well, I could, I could go on for hours on that. <laughs> uh, but we started a business with $250 of initial capital, had no business plan, never took a business class. So. You can go over all the issues on how to build a business, how to plan a business, how to write a business plan, all that was absent. We, we finally wrote a business plan three or four years in when we had to go to the bank for financing because they, they needed a business plan and we, we sort of learned what that was. Um, but I, I think that, that probably some of those early mistakes was really understanding the opportunity and how we could create some kind of competitive advantage because the opportunity is there, but then how do you create a sustainable business that provides you the, the, the profit margin that you can grow that business? And and the computer business, it was very competitive and we were able to sort of stay ahead, but that was always a challenge. So how I, did you stay ahead? We stayed ahead by really providing the best quality service. We always focus on delivering the best value to our clients. We weren't the least expensive. We weren't necessarily the most expensive, but we, we really focused on customer service and customer care and provided the best engineers to, to provide the solutions. So we were technically the most sound company uh, uh, across the competitors in our area for the most part. You say you impart to Tilden and Dylan and all your other students and people come through the, the center here all your mistakes because you've made them all. Right, right. I think uh, I can be helpful in teaching because I've made every mistake in small business, not just most uh, uh, mistakes. I, you know, I use credit cards to make payroll. If you ask a business student what chapter that is in the finance book, they'll have a hard time finding it. Uh, you know, I hired people too quickly. I fired. Well, what, let's go back. So you have payroll coming up. There's not enough cash in the bank. What, what do you do? Well, you got to go borrow, right? So you typically go to friends and family first. To borrow, obviously, if, if you're a little older, maybe have a have an equity line or some assets, you can leverage those. But if you don't, if you're young, typically you, you go to friends and family and you get money there. Uh, and then you usually go to credit cards, which is, I don't recommend it, but that's what I had to do uh, to make it. Um, and then eventually you can go to investors and get other people involved, but you have to have show some traction. You have to have some success, typically, to get to that point. Guys, Pet Solutions with the Pet Lawn, is it it's one product company right now? Um, it's actually, we have two different sizes of the Pet Lawn and then a line of accessory products to support it. So it's, there's like a one-time purchase, you purchase a Pet Lawn and then there's consumable products like pads and cleaner and waste bags and stuff that go along with it. And I understand also working on a product to lure the pets over to the, so they'll use the lawn, right? Yeah, that's a new thing we're working on right now, so. 
Okay. Oh. Sense of real quick of the scope of the company already. It's how old? It's, it's well, we started shipping product in January, and I think it was like uh, was it June? We started working on it. La yeah, like about about June. About June of what would that be? Like a year and four months ago, so three months ago. Yeah. And sales, employees, where are you at right now? Uh, right now, we've only been selling since January. So up until then. We went, went to our first trade show a year ago. Um, I only had prototypes and no production or anything actually. Um, but it kind of like allowed us to test the waters and kind of see where the product would fall in the pet industry. Um, it realized some things we need to change and additions we need to bring onto the product line. Uh, and then brought that on and then in January started shipping and selling the product. So before it was like a battle between trying to sell stuff we didn't have and like get the product there so um, but yeah since January I'd say and if you had to guess or hope by year end or uh, we can get our first one year look how big will this company be what might you be grossing in sales at the end of this year where are we at September now like hundred and sixty thousand or so, so yeah not bad for first year the hardest part to get to this point um, <laughs> like I don't know if there's like there's just well, like well, was there the fork of, in the road where it's like I, I don't know if this is gonna happen. There's a lot of forks in the road. <laughs> actually. Pick, when pick, our pick, pick a time. Well, initially, <laughs> we were making like the design phase was a fork. Like if we could figure out a way to design it so it'd be cost effective to produce, then we didn't even have enough capital to make the first one. So that was like it was like okay, we can do this. No, we can't do this. No, wait, yeah, we can. We can do it this way. Then we went with that, and then it was like another fork like is this gonna work or not and just designing so. a way to make it cost effectively like we looked at the certain like molds you needed to make it right we can't afford that that's way too expensive because you're trying to hit a mass audience right you you, you don't want it just as a boutique i know you're in a lot of independent pet places but ultimately you'd love to be in the pet smarts right and it's yeah. got to be affordable yeah. Yeah. yeah that was part of the reason was it wasn't so much that uh well per part cost was also an issue but it was the mold cost that really almost killed us at the beginning um, and it was a the way ours is designed is a lot different than anyone else's on the competitor I mean on the market and I think a reason for that is they didn't figure out a way to get past um, that production like wall I guess their initial stages of starting so allowing us to or, like us figuring out a way to create the drainage system and use different types of mold to do that really allow us to go with this design and then enter the market with a competitive advantage well, without wanna, having huge startup. Want to talk about your expansion plans, what comes next, and Rich has only been uh, really in the, uh, heading up center for several months, but you got some neat events in this year, the California Dreaming Business Plan Startup Weekend. We're going to talk about that when we get back with the entrepreneurs on the Chapman Business Report. Welcome back to the Chapman Business Report. Pete Weitzner joined by the entrepreneurs. Richard Sudek, head of the uh, director of the Center for Le Leatherby Center for Entrepreneurship and Business Ethics. And recent winners of the Forbes National Contest for Most Likely to Succeed. They're still college students. Tilden Smith and Dylan Baltz of the Pet Solutions and their product, the Pet Lawn. Uh, Richard, you're, you're uh, as I mentioned, you've only been here a few months, but you have a pretty lofty goal. Orange County, for all its success, for all its entrepreneurial success and things like the biomedical business, never quite had that teamwork, if you will, we use a simple word, that places like San Diego have in developing their biotech business. And you'd like to bring that here and have Chapman be that nexus for entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Orange County has an incredible amount of entrepreneurial activity going on. We're the U.S. capital of medical devices, action sports, and a number of IT businesses. A lot of entrepreneurial, uh, successful entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial activity. However, we're not a very well connected entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I really want to help drive that ecosystem and have Chapman be the place where entrepreneurs, investors, and inventors meet and collaborate. And so most of my programs are designed actually outward facing to bring the community in and connect the community because we can leverage those successful entrepreneurs in the different organizations, the entrepreneur organizations, the investor organizations, the inventors, and help them get connected and collaborate. And you know of what you speak, because after you sell your business, you became involved with the Tech Coast Angels, probably the most famous VC group right here in Orange County. 
Yeah, we're one of the largest ones in, in the U.S. We've invested over $110 million in about 170 companies and have attracted about $1.2 billion of add-on financing. And so I've been heavily involved with that, really enjoyed it. I've screened about 800 companies since 2000 and was chairman last year. And we're really integrating a lot of Tech Coast Angel members and successful entrepreneurs into the program here at, at the Leatherby Center. I mentioned UCSD. I remember from years ago in covering the biotech business and UCSD Connect, with, as I think the organization there. What are the others that you're trying to replicate here? Obviously, they've got them in Silicon Valley. Yeah, well, although Silicon Valley is, you know, I spend time up there because of Tech Coast Angels and because of my research, and that, that community is so connected. Everyone's going to everyone else's events, and it's not that there's a specific organization that connects them, like Connect does, and Connect does an excellent job in, in San Diego. Uh, but just the infrastructure and how, how that community is sort of arranged, it's, it's, it, it just works very well together. And Stanford is sort of a centerpiece in that, in that particular community. So is Berkeley, there's other universities there, et cetera. And, and really Chapman could play that role, both for formal and informal education here for our community. So we'll be, you know, we don't only offer formal education, but we'll be offering informal seminars and, and boot camps and workshops for practitioners by practitioners. Guys, you're still in school. Um, how do you make that work? I mean, you're spending how many hours, for instance, at your business? Um, basically, <laughs> every hour we're not in school. So, I have 18 units, and you have, have what? 18 too, actually. So, so it's so like it's really a full load. <laughs> I'm sure it's been suggested to you um, that maybe you don't need to finish up right now. Um, it's been suggested, <laughs> probably not to me, but by me. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've really. I've got just, I'll finish this year, so I thought maybe it'd be better to take less units and try and like do it slowly, but then it just gets busier and busier, so it's just a toss up between not finishing it or just getting it done as fast as possible. So I thought just try and get it done, see if it works. Well, of course, Richard Sudak is seated to your right, but do you think you could have done that? Um, that how has the education fed into your success, Dylan? I think that um, actually the same thing as cross both our minds like you said earlier but um, I think it's kind of like the sum is greater than the whole of the parts like you don't really see or know where different help would come from and one of the things was like the business plan so like winning that like that 5k really helped us like move into our new warehouse uh, and get necessary stuff for that so uh, and then in addition like meeting Sudek and then Jeff who was our advisor so you don't really see these things like should I go to school because this is going to happen? But it ends up happening. So I think, uh, so like, and then teachers you meet and professors. Um, like I talked to my law professor and had a few questions about that with some contracts great, we we're signing. Great free resource. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I guess from the outside, you really can't like pinpoint where maybe helping or getting education right now is going to really help grow the business. But um, having meeting those a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So and then in the long run, I think it'll definitely help us. Forbes is a great brand name, has, has winning this uh, most likely to succeed? Have you already reaped some benefits from that? Um, I think we've got some online sales we, from it that we wouldn't yeah, have Yeah, it pushed had. a lot of traffic to our website, so yeah, that yeah, was the so most immediate effect we saw from that. They mentioned a business plan. And tell me about this, Richard. They won, I think, an internal contest, but you've got a national contest coming up. It really, it's Western states focused. So we have what's called California Dreaming, which is a, a, a minimum of $100,000 of cash uh, for, for schools in the West Coast, plus all the, all the plans or all the teams will be evaluated by VCs and angel groups, multiple angel have groups. Have to be a college student. Have to be a college student. And we, we currently have uh, 15 committed. We have schools like Caltech, USC, UCLA, Cal Berkeley, University of Utah, University of Houston. So a number of schools involved. Um, we're also adding, uh, we're right now in the process of figuring out how to add a job creation adder award, which on top of that 100,000, we'll have an additional cash prize for the team that has the potential to create the most US jobs. We think that's a current topic and will stay a current topic and uh, that will help bring more attention to the competition, which will help the student teams. And the potential, maybe even most important, the cash is nice for financing. I don't know if you mentioned that, for upwards of seven figures of financing. Right, so every, every team, whether you win the cash or not, your, your plans are being evaluated by angels and VCs in the audience, on the, on the panels, the judges. And so you might not win cash, but you could get maybe a million dollars of seed financing, because these are angels and VCs, so these are easily quarter million to maybe one, two million dollars of seed financing opportunity. That's in the winter, I believe. 
Um, but before that, we have, was it Startup Weekend? Startup Weekend is uh, November, November 18th, which is a great event. Um, this is a, an event where 100 or so entrepreneurs and others come together and uh, over a weekend, and by the time you hit Sunday, one or two uh, companies are actually launched. There's been over 1,100 companies launched through Startup Weekend in 100 cities in 40 countries. And we'll be hosting a Startup Weekend every semester. So our first one is in November. We'll have you know cool speakers and successful entrepreneurs as mentors roaming around and helping the teams. It's not just for an entrepreneur, but it's for someone who wants to be involved in an entrepreneurial company. So you could be a programmer or an accountant, or in marketing and you go and you'll gravitate towards an entrepreneur with an idea that you might want to get involved with. And, and it, so it's, it's, it's a great event. Um, you've probably heard Startup Weekend in LA, Aston Kutcher often comes to that because uh, he's doing some investing. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a great event and uh, it'll be a lot of fun for the community. It's, it's mostly focused on the community, but of course some of our students will be Maybe you can bring Kutcher down here. He's got a restaurant over in, uh, in Santa Ana. So. Maybe we'll see some celebrity down here. That would be great if maybe you can help us do that. Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're on speed dial. I'm one of his several million followers on, on Twitter. What's next for your company? Um, I think the future for it is just to come up with more products. Well, well, first, I guess, build the Petlon brand and get it into more stores. And then when that's more, as soon as Petlon becomes more of a recognized brand name, then introduce more products that are under different brand names underneath like the umbrella of International Pet Solutions. So we kind of dream big coming up with a company name. It only has one product line now, but we want to add more to it in the future. Yeah. And then kind of getting the Petlon brand to like a successful place in the US will allow us to network and use our customer distribution base to launch other product lines. So um, I think our second product line or brand, whatever that ends up being, will be a lot easier to introduce because we already have customers that we can present it to um, and then distribution channels to take it down also. Every entrepreneur business person, I mean, first and foremost, you've got to make a profit. Of course, there's great value and satisfaction in employing people. Uh, but Dio Richard mentioned uh, part of uh, one of their, his programs to create U.S. jobs. You get a little idealistic, too, with your business. I know you're manufacturing in Los Angeles. That's, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I guess you could say it's kind of cool, like, in the sense, like, with so much unemployment right now that we can hire friends and whatnot to, to kind of like help with production or selling and then uh, so it kind of helps them and they don't really have to go out and find a job because they can pick up work with us so I mean, that aspect is kind of cool till they, um, till they don't really show up one direction. day uh, yeah or but there's take plenty a day, of other a week people, off because so. they're your friend <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they find out this is business we could go on well we'll do another show we certainly want to uh, 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 be there for um for your events coming up, Richard, but this has been terrific. Richard Sudek is the director of the Leatherby Center for Entrepreneurship and Business Ethics, and Tilden Smith and Dylan Boltz, uh, co-founders, co-owners of Pet Solutions, the Pet Lawn, the main product, the winning product of the Forbes Most Likely to Succeed. All three of you, thank you very much. All the best to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Best. And we'll come back with a quick word about future Chapman Business Reports. Stay with us on the Chapman Business Report. Big thanks again to the entrepreneurs for taking time out of their very busy dual lives to join us on this special show on entrepreneurship and to Jeff Cole, class of 2001, Jeff Cole Productions for he and his gang of Chapman TV students putting the show on the air. We're back again next week with another look at business, financial markets, and a special focus on the regional economies of Southern California on the Chapman Business Report. Thanks for watching. I'm Pete Weitzner.
Funding for this program was provided by Chapman University.